With temperatures dropping, I think it's time to talk about my fall running essentials for 2020. Five point three five miles, nine minutes, thirteen seconds from one hundred and forty two beats per minute today. Getting out there for a little bit of a chilly run today here in New Vienna, Iowa, and it's perfect time now to talk about some fall running essentials. Before I do, I do want to go over some disclosures. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about and recommending today is stuff that was sent to me for a purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, other stuff I did purchase with my own money. I won't specify of all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today in the video, which ones were paid for and which ones were sent, but I will in the description of the video down below, I will make sure to put an ask by anything that was sent to me for the purpose of review. But in either event, no matter how it got to me, uh, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their product in this video. Uh, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about some fall running essentials. So what you need or need for fall running is really gonna depend on kind of like what the weather changes are like where you are. Here where I am in the Midwest or kind of the Northern Midwest, the temperatures that I'm talking about are basically everything from like marathon racing temperature to like just above freezing. That's kind of what I would consider like fall or autumn conditions. And because the seasons are changing, that means winds are picking up and precipitation might be increasing quite a bit. So things can get kind of unpleasant. So far, it has been pretty cold here in Iowa and we've had a lot of days where the temperatures are in the 40s and even recently we've had a lot of days where when i'm running early in the morning like right around sunrise temperatures are in the 30s or just a few degrees celsius above freezing so here's kind of like the things that i would look to in the fall as temperatures start to drop and i'll go from like kind of like warmer to kind of cooler weather kind of materials but Overall, I think the good news is for a lot of fall running, I don't think there's usually a lot of stuff you need to go out and buy. And a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about isn't like new stuff that I picked up. It's gonna be a lot of stuff that I've kind of had pieces that last year for a while or stuff that you probably already have and can incorporate into your running as you go from summer into fall. First thing that I'll talk about is gloves. So as the temperatures drop, I really like to make sure that I have gloves. Gloves are probably like the first thing I start adding as the temperatures drop. I know I might be a little bit idiosyncratic on that one, but I'm someone, maybe my like circulation isn't good or whatever it is, I'm just the, probably the first person in the group to start getting cold and I'm usually the last one to warm up. So I like to have gloves, not super thick ones, but I like really thin ones. And one of the ones that I really enjoy is a brand called Trailheads. They make a different variety. They make super thick ones and make super thin ones. I usually have a couple pairs of those just because sometimes I end up like misplacing them. And it's always nice to have just that extra pair of gloves lying around. The next thing I wanna talk about is calf sleeves. Now there's a couple of brands that I've worked with before. The, the two like main, I just recently made a video about calf sleeves. One of the brands that uh, I've been really enjoying this fall is OS First. They make a pretty good uh, set of calf sleeves that I've been liking the compression. It's not too thick of a material. So like even when it's a little bit warmer, still definitely good to have them on. But if you want something that's a little bit thicker, I made a video a while ago about another brand. I really like those. They're a little bit thicker, so they do a little bit better in colder temps, keeping your legs warm. The compression's really good and they were really cheap, but lasted me a really long time. I think like two or three years for like a $15 pair of uh, calf sleeves. And there's like very minimal branding on it. So like that's another brand that I really like. The next thing that I'll talk about in terms of fall running essentials is long sleeves. Now, long sleeves is definitely falls in the category of stuff that you probably already have or have picked up. So you don't necessarily need to go out and buy any. Um, 
For example, this one, I'm wearing one from the Chicago Half Marathon a couple years, or actually it was last year, 2019, this blue one. And so I love it when races give long sleeves as the, like the race merch. Uh, a short sleeve shirt, I'll probably end up putting that in like the donation pile like relatively quickly, but a long sleeve shirt definitely gets use. I have some long sleeve race shirts from like four years ago that I'm still using heavily in the rotation because they're just really useful either as layering for winter or layering in the fall. So you can either wear just a long sleeve or when it gets colder, you can have like a second layer underneath and have double up on that and it's not too bulky. So it ends up being really useful in the fall. I did pick up a couple of new long sleeves this year. One was like a generic brand. I don't remember the name of it on Amazon, super cheap, but it had like thumb holes and it fits pretty good. It's a little bit on the baggy side, not the most flattering cut. Um, so like when it's windy, it like flaps in the wind like crazy, but overall a long sleeve shirt that really works for like 50 degrees-ish, 40 degrees-ish or so. And then I also tried Bayleaf, which is a brand that I think a lot of you guys are familiar with, super cheap stuff on Amazon. And again, thumb sleeve, which is useful in the fall, uh, but also the quality seems to be there. I mean, haven't used it for a super long time, but it's pretty cheap and so far it's holding it really well. So that's another long sleeve that I've been enjoying this fall in particular. Next, let's talk about how you're gonna keep like the rest of your upper body warm. If it's too cold for just like a long sleeve, some people might throw on a vest and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I usually hold off on the vest till the winter running but if just a long sleeve isn't doing it for you, I really like to start wearing the neck gaiter a little bit early. I'm a big fan of putting them in the spring and in the fall as well. Even if you're not gonna use it to cover your face, cause it's not like even besides Corona reasons, but like just to cover your face for warmth, just having it around your neck, I think is a really nice way to help keep the body temperature up. And it makes me feel really comfortable. I, in fact, a lot of days I'll just wear my neck gaiter around cause I just like having it, I don't know. Buff is probably the brand that you're most familiar with. They're probably the leader in the field. Uh, I have several buff brand buffs, but you know, a lot of your favorite YouTube runners have branded neck gaiters, Ginger Runner, Ben Parks. I've got one in my merch shop as well. So look around. I think that's a really great way to help support some of the creators that you like is to go out there and look to see if they have buffs or neck gaiters that you can run all fall and winter along with. If it's getting pretty nasty though, I mentioned early though in the fall, a lot of those transitional seasons, that's when you start to get some of the nastier precipitation. That's where you might want like a windbreaker or like a, a rain layer. Now, if it's like a super downpour, no matter what you wear, it could be like real, it could be like, um, like a fisherman's rain jacket, you're still gonna get wet, but when it's like a moderate rain that you could still probably run through, that's when I do like to have a windbreaker or if it's really windy, wind really cuts through a lot of the athletic apparel sometimes. So like having the windbreaker is really nice. My favorite brand for like kind of like a thicker outer layer or windbreaker layer is Janji. They make really great apparel that has held up fantastically over time. Also really comfortable just to kind of wear and like as a transitional piece, like maybe I don't want to wear a jacket today, but I want to wear something a little bit warmer on top. I have one that is more of like a windbreaker without a hood. And then I have one that's like a hoodie. Uh, love them both. They get a lot of use um, all fall and spring. And I also use them pretty deep into the winter as well. Sometimes I might kind of layer that with the vest. So really useful piece to have. This fall, I also picked up another rain layer, uh, which is a windbreaker from GoPro. I recently bought the GoPro Hero 9 and they kind of made you sign up for the GoPro subscription as part of that. But you also get a discount when you buy merch. So I bought a t-shirt and I bought a windbreaker and it's not necessarily meant for running, but I've run in it a whole bunch of times and it works out pretty good. Kept, kept me warm, stayed out of my way in terms of running and uh, it was a very functional piece of clothing for running. Now, the other thing that I might look at, and this is the final thing I'll talk about for the fall running essentials, is full length tights or like longer running pants. Uh, for longer running pants, I like like things that are more fitted in like the track pant kind of variety or like soccer warmups are usually a good place to look as well because it is more fitted and it's a little bit stretchy, so really great for running. 
TCA is one of my favorite brands because they make stuff that fits really great, holds up really well over lots of washes, has relatively minimal branding, and is pretty cheap. And so both my favorite track pant is from TCA, and I've bought this tra track pants multiple times now already just because I like it so much. Sometimes their zippers aren't so great, and that's like the main reason why I have to buy more of the stuff is because the zippers fail, but the clothing itself holds up really well. They also make uh, full length tights. They're not like the tights that you can wear in and of themselves. They're the kind that usually I would like to pair with shorts and that's how I usually wear them. And when I pair them with shorts, I love to pair them with my Path Project shorts because the Path Project shorts have phenomenal pockets. You could fit gels, you could fit your phone in there. If you have gloves that you've taken off, you got pockets that you could put stuff in those Path Project shorts as well. So you don't need to bring like a flip belt. You don't need to bring a vest. Everything can kind of get contained in the shorts. That's like probably my favorite way to run is with like full length tights and a pair of really good running shorts. So that's something that I like to do as well. I also just like running in full length tights as well. Just the kind that you can wear without uh, shorts on top. And for me, I don't know what the rules are in terms of what are tights that you should put pants on top, like shorts on top. What are tights that you can just wear by themselves? For me, it's like how much stitching is there around the crotch? If there's like a lot of stitching around the crotch, that looks like long underwear to me, and I feel like you gotta put some shorts on top of that. I bought a pair of tights from Amazon for this fall. They ended up being a little bit warm. They're kind of like their thermal ones, so it's kind of like running with like fleece tights. Really warm. But those, I definitely have to put some shorts on because it looks like I'm wearing like long underwear. But some tights, full length tights that I love are Jonji's. I mentioned them already in the windbreaker category or like the light jacket category, but they make some full tights that are fantastic. They're slightly compressive, but more tights rather than compression. So like, it's not like, you know, squeezing you in like a sausage, uh, full length, they keep you warm and phenomenal pockets. I love like the side pockets on my full length tights. So I could put like a phone in on one side, gels in on the other and keys if I need that. And everything just stays in place. I love it. Uh, also Roadrunner Sports makes uh, a really great pair of full length tights. My favorite half tights are from Roadrunner Sports as well. They're like the Charge 7 inch. They now make a full like, length tight out of the same model, same design, and they even have a zipper at the ankles, so that's really helpful. And they have really great side pockets as well. Definitely one of my favorite pieces to wear for the fall. So a lot of you guys who are newer to running and starting to think that like, you know, I ran in the spring, I ran in the summer, now's my time to like take a break. You don't necessarily have to. Get a couple of layers. They're not. You don't have to get a ton. Keep your running going, keep it chill, keep it consistent all throughout the fall, all throughout the winter. Then when you come back next spring, you're gonna have so much base mileage built in. You're gonna be ready to take off when it comes to be springtime. And the way that you're gonna be able to do that comfortably is making sure that you're decked out with the right gear. So those are my thoughts on fall running essentials for 2020. Uh, I've posted links in the description to everything that I could kind of still find of the stuff that I like. Uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to put them in the comments or better yet, if you have questions about your specific climate where you are and what are the things that you might need for fall running, feel free to stop by the live stream. I do a live stream every day, 3 p.m. Central time. You can come in, ask questions and just hang out for talk with lots of other runners who are there to hang out and talk. Sometimes we ask questions, sometimes we talk about running, sometimes we don't, but we always have a good time. Or at least I try to make sure we do. So hopefully I'll see you there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?